Good morning. Good to see you all this morning. I'm still coming in. We're going to get started. Uh, we're looking forward to a great morning, a great day in the house of the Lord with some good music together and some fellowship and some worship as well. So to get your hymnals out and we will get started. A lot of really, really neat stuff up here, but I already got told I can't touch it. So it's just, it's, it's, it's. take your songbooks out this morning and stand and stand and let's sing number two ten. Ring the bells. Two ten. Your songbook. the first there. Ring the bells, ring the bells, let the whole world know Christ was born in Bethlehem many years ago. Born to die that man may live, came to earth new life to give. Born of Mary, born so low, many years ago. God the Father gave His Son, gave His own beloved One, one to His sinful earth, to bring mankind to love and birth. Ring the bells, ring the bells, let the whole world know, Christ the Savior lives today, as He did so. Christ is born, born to die on Calvary, born to set his people free, God himself in human form, tell it Christ is born. He left his royal throne, he came on to claim his own, Christ the Lord has come to earth. Go spread the news of Jesus' birth. Ring the bells, ring the bells, let the whole world know. Christ the Lord is today as he did so long ago. Turn back just a few pages there to number 205. Go tell it on the mountain. Number 205, go tell it on a map. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks at night Behold, throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. And brought us God's salvation, the blessed Christmas morn. Go 
Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful today that we have a Savior to celebrate. Father, this is not uh, all about um, the fuzzy, warm feeling of a, of a baby in a manger. But, Father, you came in that manger, to that manger for a very specific, real purpose. You came to earth to die that man might live. And so we're just so thankful that we celebrate this season not just this season, but we celebrate every day of the year as believers because of what you've done for us. But bless again this morning together as we look to you for all that's done. May we rejoice in Christ our Savior. This we pray and thank you for in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning when you shake hands, don't go very far, please. We want to get as much time as we can to our group. So, but I do want you to greet those around you. Turn and shake hands. Smile nicely. Welcome them to the house of the Lord this morning, all right? <clears throat> All right, thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> All right, just a couple quick announcements, please, as you find your seat. I'm not going to go through all the announcements. They're in your bulletin. Again, we're, we want to streamline things this morning. But uh, we do have our concert this morning. If you brought food in, you can set it back there. You can see the collection gathering. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time to get the word out, but uh, the McLaurin will probably say more about that. Brother Dan will. But collecting food for needy families uh, and uh, offerings as well. And so we appreciate those who brought those in. We will be taking a special love offering at the end of our service. Uh, in a few moments, we'll take our regular offering. At the end of the service, we'll take a, a special love offering for the Macklemores and, and uh, things. So uh, be thinking about that and preparing for that. Uh, the only thing I really want to highlight next, if we could have, if you've not made your uh, Faith Promise Missions uh, giving pledge yet, uh, we'd like those by next week so we can review our missions budget and see how we might be able to uh, uh, honor the Lord with those sacrificial gifts that you are desiring to honor the Lord with. If you have any questions, you can see me on that. But uh, I guarantee you uh, that God blesses faithfulness and, uh, and uh, your, your sacrifice. So, All right, I think that's really all I want to mention. We do have evening service tonight, just so you know, 6 o'clock right here. And uh, we'll get back into our study in the book of uh, Galatians. So, All right, I do want to mention just one thing here. I uh, did receive a note um, from the Hostetlers. They are in Madagascar now. And uh, so we praise the Lord for that. So it was a, uh, a lengthy trip with lengthy layovers, but uh, at several different ports or several different airports, but they made it. And so be praying for them as they uh, get established. Uh, and there's a lot involved there. So they have temporary housing, then they can look for a permanent, more permanent housing where they'll be ministering and, and uh, still a need for a vehicle, I'm sure, that, over there and so forth. So let's just keep them in our prayers, all right? All right, that's all I wanted to mention. So if we could have our men come, a couple of announcements, or not announcements, prayer requests. I just want to uh, highlight very quick.
Good morning. Good morning. All right, that's much better. Well, we sure are glad to be here with you today. And uh, we're so appreciative of your pastor fitting us in on such short notice. And we sure do love being here with you guys. And I've told you before, but this feels like home to us. And so any chance we get to be here, we sure do appreciate it. And we greatly appreciate your wonderful missions house. We got in about 2 o'clock this morning. And uh, it was much easier than having to go all the way home and then get up at before the crack of dawn so that we can be back. So it's a wonderful place and we sure do appreciate it. And we're looking forward to an opportunity this morning to just worship the Lord for a while. We've come to a season where the whole world pauses. And they don't know why they pause, but they know there's something special about now. We have such a great opportunity to just share with them our faith and our hope and what it is that Christ has done for us. So we're going to take some time this morning just to do that very thing, to just share with you our love for Christmas, but more importantly, his love for us, that he would come and sacrifice himself for us. And we're going to start things off this morning just kind of getting the Christmas spirit with an old traditional Christmas song that uh, I think y'all know and I hope you enjoy it. It says simply this, Christmas time is coming. Being able to tell the weather and the seasons and the forecast by looking at the stars, 
After that night, the stars never looked the same. Yeah. After that night, when they looked up, and they knew that that one star represented their Savior, the King that they had waited for. I want you to listen as they do this song for you. It talks about that moment. This beautiful star of that moment.
think through all the different songs that we consider traditional and popular Christmas songs and uh, even the ones that we might call secular. If we really want to look into them and try to find purpose. I don't think it's that hard. Take, for example, a song like The Little Drummer Boy. It's a song about supposedly a little boy that was using all that he had, all that he was capable of, for one purpose, to herald the birth of a king. Isn't that our job? Take everything that we have, take everything that we are, no matter how great or how small, and use it simply to broadcast what it is that the Savior's done for us. That's right. To tell other people, particularly at this time of the year, one of the statistically hardest times of the year, what it is that we have in Christ our Savior. Yeah. When we sing about things like silver bells, what's the job of a bell? To ring out, to make it known. We rang the bells this morning to let people know it was church time. Hey. That's our job, to be the bells, to ring out, to tell people about our Savior that came some 2,000 years ago for us. You listen as they do this song for you. I hope you'll enjoy it. Simply that. So. This is it. 
Christmas time is this next song that we're going to do. Because to me it typifies what it was or what we should have gotten other than, aside from, the birth of the king, salvation. He brought with him that moment true rest. A people that had waited for generations, for hundreds of years, anticipating living up to this, this standard in hopes that someday their king would come. And he was finally there. Can you imagine the peace that that would have had? Something that was, like I said before, pure faith that someday this was going to happen. Father after father, generation after generation, telling the story, making the promise. And finally, it was time. They were going to see the child born, the king raised to a man. <coughs> Salvation given. There could be no greater peace that I could think of than what they must have felt in that moment. I want you to listen as they do this song for you. It talks about what I think that great peace would bring, the rest, the comfort that it would bring. You know, listen to this song.
Linda's going to sing for me. Yes, but you're going to sing for me. Not your head like this. You're going to sing for me. <laughs> Just gonna have her say uh, Say, are you 
Yeah. 
family for taking care of us and putting us up last night for all that you do. And I just want to say from my family and yours, Merry Christmas. And I'm going to have them do, uh, I think what's a requirement of every bluegrass band, you have to play at least one instrumental song or the bluegrass police show up, they take away my banjo player, it's a big ugly thing. But, uh, they're going to do a song that I think we all know. Simply says joy to the world because that's what he brought. That was the sole purpose. And uh, when they get done, I want to take just a couple minutes and challenge you with a thought. I won't hold you long, but I want you to be thinking about this song, Joy to the World. the one that has overcome, that will overcome in the future, the 
the one that can help. Go and pray. But he didn't stop writing there. James didn't just say, well, if you're afflicted, if you're stressed, if you're overwhelmed, just go pray about it. I think sometimes as Christians, that's kind of our catchphrase. Someone comes to you with a problem, what do you say? Brother, I'll pray for you. Yeah. The problem with that is, that's usually where the thought exits our mind. Yeah. Right. We tell them we're going to pray for them. We feel good about saying it. Yeah. And then we go home. Yeah. And life carries on. And they're left where they were, afflicted. Or better yet, we'll say to them, well, brother, if, if you'll just pray on it, I'm sure God will show you something. And although that's a very real statement, that's very truthful, that's really not what they need to hear from us. But it's really look how James finished off that verse. He said, is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Can I sing psalms um, effectively if I'm doing it quietly and in private? What's the best way to sing songs? What, how, did, how did David sing most of his songs? It was vocal. It was loud. It was with purpose. And we're surrounded by a group of people that are afflicted during this season. And our responsibility as Christians, those that are supposed to be merry, is to sing songs. To praise him loudly and joyfully. So that those that are around us that are struggling, that are wounded, that are hurting, they can hear us praise and worship Him. Why? Because they need to hear somebody singing? Because they need to hear somebody praising? No, because they need to hear about God. They need somebody to point them back to the one that actually has the answer. See, I'm afraid that as Christians, we spend much of our lives hiding the fact that we're Christians. We walk around with our heads held down, trying to go about our lives so as not to cause any trouble and not to stir anything up. But what the world really needs from us is to hear our praise, to hear our joy, and to hear us singing psalms of worship to our Heavenly Father so that those that are afflicted know where to go to get the help that they need. You say, well, I don't really know that that's what that says. Run with me down to verse 20. We're going to wrap this up. Verse 20 says, Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. And let me back up and give you verse 19 for context. Maybe that will help. Brethren, if, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him. Uh, let me put it like this. Brethren, if you're troubled, if you're having a hard time and somebody comes alongside of you and, and helps you out, converts you from the error, let him know that he which converteth, that's the helper, that's us, him that converteth, the sinner, shall save a soul from death, shall hide a multitude of sins. I told you before I love words. This word shall, it's a very big word. It's a very big five letter word. This word is what we call a future tense word. It doesn't mean that uh, what you did ended right there. You came alongside, you helped the brother that was hurting, and now you just leave him where he was. It means that you've come along and you've picked him up, and now as a Christian, you have a responsibility. Your responsibility is to walk alongside that person and to continue to help them get back where they need to be. That's what Christmas is all about. We're carrying with us this joy, this unspeakable joy that Christ has put in us. And we have a, an obligation, a responsibility. If any marry, let him sing songs. And as I'm singing these songs, these praises, this worship, and those that are afflicted are being drawn back to Christ. My responsibility, as I come alongside of them, and I don't say, brother, I'll pray for you. We'll see you. I lift them up and I dust them off. Not because I'm better than they are. Because I've been there too. And they need my help. Not that there's anything special about me. They need the Lord that I can point them to. They need the one that you can point them to. And we have this, this future tense, this long-term responsibility. We don't just to come along and say, brother, I'll pray for you. And go about our business. 
We get to come alongside and continue to help them and disciple them and work with them. Why? So that when they get back on their feet, they can come along somebody else. They can come along another brother's side and lift him up. So during this holiday season, as we're going about all our busyness and all our hustle and bustle, and we're spending time with our family and our friends, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just remember that there's a whole world around you right. that's hurting, yeah. that's grieving, that has an emptiness inside of them, that's afflicted. They need to hear your praise. But not only do they need to hear your praise, they need you to come alongside and lift them up and do what you can do to help them. There's people that you'll come in contact that I'll never meet, that your pastor will never meet but that you can help in your own way. And that is our Christian Christmas responsibility. Amen. Lord, I want to thank you for what you've done with us this morning. I want to thank you for these people, for their hearts, for their love. I want to thank you that we've been able to come together in your house and worship you. Lord, I want to thank you for the gift of your son. Lord, not only for the gift of his birth, but more importantly, for the gift of his sacrifice, of his death. Lord, for paying a debt that he didn't know, that I couldn't pay. Lord, I ask that you would give each and every one of us in this Christmas season opportunity upon opportunity to point others to you. Lord, not to get lost in the shuffle and the lights and the glitz of Christmas, but to truly remember the sacrifice that was made so that we can have all that we have. Lord, I thank you for what you've done. In your name. Amen. Brother Mark. All right. Thank you for coming this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. We're going to close in prayer, and then we'll take our love offering as we leave. But the message of the song, the message that was the challenge that was given, I want to make sure before you leave this morning, above all else, that you have that joy in your own heart. So every head bowed, every eye closed, just between you and the Lord. Don't worry about others around you. I wonder if there might be one or two here this morning, and you would say, I don't have that joy. I don't have that relationship, personal relationship with Christ that results in that joy. You may be looking for that peace and joy and a lot of other things and you've not yet found it, uh, the only place you'll find it is in Christ. But right now, if you would just lift your hand and say, uh, I need him this morning in my life. Would you please pray for me? And I'll do just that. If you raise your hand, I'll say thank you. Put it right back down. I won't embarrass you or anything of that nature, but I want to pray for you. Anyone like that at all? I need that joy in my life. Anyone? All right, then if not, I wonder if there's some here this morning Maybe, Lord, impress upon your heart right now someone who needs that joy uh, that's in your life or that you know of. And you would say, Lord, use me to help reach that person and others. But I would, I would ask that you just think, uh, let the Lord bring at least one person to your mind uh, that needs the joy of the Lord. And, and you say, Lord, help me reach that person this season, this year, uh, for you to reach out with the, the love of Christ to them. Anyone very quickly? I know somebody. All right, thank you. Anyone else? All right, there's several. Thank you. Thank you. Think of that person. Keep them in mind on your heart. There's opportunities all around us, uh, but those opportunities come one by one by one. So uh, I trust that we will follow through on that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your blessings this morning, for the, the rejoicing that we have in Christ. Father, the answer for this world is not uh, a a better government we all wish for a better government I know but it's, that's not the answer the answer is is not in more things uh, more prosperity uh, father the, the, the what this country needs is more of you and father we are a part of that so help us as we go from here in the places that you take us the places you put us uh, to do our role our part in bringing this message to a lost and dying world. This we pray and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together and we're going to...
Can I get the other plates back? They should be underneath the thing back there, I hope. And we'll, this will be for our love offering. As soon as the plate passes you by, you may be dismissed, okay? Uh, this is not, there's no obligation here, but we want to make sure you all have an opportunity to give uh, to the ministry this morning. And um, again, thank you for the food that brought in, uh, you all brought in back there. Uh, Macklemore's going to have a good lunch now. No, that's not, <laughs> that's not for them. That's for needy families, local needy families, by the way. Uh, and so we appreciate your gift of that. So um, let's just pray. We'll ask a final blessing, all right? And then after the plates are passed, you may be dismissed. Thanks again for coming. We hope, trust, pray that you'll come back and see us, all right? Father, thank you for, again, your blessings. And now as we take this offering, uh, may you use it uh, in this ministry, but use it to accomplish uh, great things for the kingdom of God. Thank you for the Macklemore family and for them desiring to be here and, and their willingness to be here this morning and share with us. Uh, may you bless them as they go. We know they have a, a concert in just a few hours, uh, a little ways from here, and, and a busy schedule this month. So we pray that you keep them safe, keep them healthy. Use them, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, plates will be passed, and you may go.